Hi, and thanks for tuning in. This is ETF.com's weekly video series, Talk ETFs. My name is Sumit Roy, and I'm Senior ETF Analyst for ETF.com. And this week, I'm speaking with Jake Hanley, who's Managing Director and Senior Portfolio Specialist at Tucrium, an agriculture-focused ETF issuer. Jake, great to have you on the show. Welcome. Thank you. It's nice to be here. Absolutely. So, Jake, what in the world is going on with cocoa? Prices, last I checked, are close to a record $8,000 per ton. And there doesn't seem to be an end in sight to this rally. What's the reason for this parabolic move higher? You know, with most commodities, the story is the same as always. It's a supply and demand imbalance. Um, and also with agricultural commodities, we have a typical catalyst, and that is weather. Uh, you can blame the current El Nino cycle for exacerbating production issues and weather-related production issues, particularly in Western Africa. Uh, and so last year, Western Africa suffered from a lot of rain and flooding, and currently it's been, been dry. And so production issues in Western Africa are really uh, weighing on the markets here uh, from a supply side. And as supply goes down and demand uh, remains pretty steady, I mean, we're talking about cocoa, right? So we're talking about chocolate, you know, chocolate demand. I don't see it going away. Uh, even during Lent, right, where, where some Catholics give up chocolate for Lent, uh, there's still chocolate demand out there. So uh, prices have been have been accelerating to the upside. And, and you're right, we're looking at prices that, that we haven't seen before. Absolutely. No one's given up chocolate anytime soon. But what's your longer term outlook for cocoa, Jake? Do you think prices can stay at these levels around 8,000? Or are they going to revert back to, you know, two, 3,000 where they were back in 2022 or something in between? You know, it, eventually most agricultural commodities tend to go back toward their, um, to trade near their cost of production, right? So farmers, whether you're talking about corn farmers or soybean farmers or cocoa farmers, uh, farming's a tough business. And typically you're, you're making a small profit um, to keep your, your crops competitive. And, and certainly I expect prices to come down eventually. It will likely coincide uh, with the fall time harvest, which happens in, in Western Africa, which, by the way, that area of the world accounts for over 70 percent of global cocoa production. And so uh, usually the harvest begins around October and extends through March. And so I am anticipating in the futures markets, we'll show you this, too, if you look at the futures prices out uh, toward the end of the year, that prices will will come back down as that harvest uh, picks up. What we're talking about, that harvest is a new crop year. OK, and so there's a chance that the production uh, will be better uh, when it comes to the time to harvest that crop in, in October through early next year as well. So if weather cooperates and that harvest is successful, I fully expect prices will come back down, but we're not there yet. And so there's a near-term supply demand problem. Hence, you have the, the near-dated futures contracts, i.e. those going off the board in, in July this summer, for example, are trading at, at near record prices. So it kind of sounds like, Jake, you're saying that it's too late to capitalize on the cocoa spike. I want to talk about, you know, other commodities in a second, but is it too late to play this move in, you know, cocoa? Well, you know, I don't want to go on the record of saying that it's it's too late in the, or to say, hey, there's still a chance and you should get in there. What I can point to, however, is the reporting that we get from the CFTC. And so we can see what professional money managers are doing. And what's most interesting about this last move, and by the way, we're talking about an over 40% move since middle of February, Okay. And during that time, the long position, i.e. The, the futures traders who are bullish, are taking long positions in these markets, have actually been selling into this rally, okay, taking profits. At the same time, this significant rally, 40% in, in just a month's time, has caused the short sellers to start covering their shorts. Uh, and so we've seen both long positions come off the table and short covering, short positions come off the table. And so what you have right now is a net long position. Again, this is in the futures market. So these are sophisticated speculators, managed money traders. The net long position is right about at its three-year average. Okay. And that's with prices near records. So from the one side, you could say, okay, we're around the three-year average. There's room for people to get longer, right? There's room for speculators to come in and establish longer positions. Um, but on the other hand, you could say, boy, we just rose 40% in, in a month. Maybe, maybe we'll, traders will sit on the side and uh, wait for the next decisive move. That makes a lot of sense. But say someone wants to get involved with Coco, Jake, is the futures market the only way to do it? Because I know we used to have ETNs that track the price of Coco, but if I'm not mistaken, they shut down a few years back. Is is that the case? 
You know, in the United States, I do not believe that there is an exchange traded product that gives you single commodity exposure to cocoa markets. Um, two gram does not have that product. We do offer a diversified commodity strategy that goes both long and short. And the, the ticker there is OAIA. And cocoa, uh, currently OAIA is long cocoa markets. So that, that strategy covers nine different um, commodity futures contracts. And, and cocoa is one of those contracts that's eligible for that strategy. That strategy can be long, it can be short, and it can be flat. And so it's not a direct play on cocoa, but cocoa is, uh, as of yesterday's close, more than 5% of the portfolio right now. That's great. So Jake, before I let you go, we've talked a lot about cocoa, but what's your quick rundown of the broader commodity markets, the broader ag markets? How are they doing this year and what's the outlook ahead? Yeah, so the broader commodity markets, you know, look, it's uh, it's interesting because it plays into the entire macro trends, right? Is the inflation trade going to be back on if the expectation is for the Fed to keep interest rates higher for longer? Uh, that inflation trade is favorable for commodities. Certainly, we've seen oil prices creep up recently. That is supportive for the overall commodity sector in general. For the agriculture sector, uh, we're looking for corn, wheat, soybeans, these, uh, these products that have been trending downwards for the last 18 months or so to establish a, a lower level of, of resistance now and perhaps trade sideways for a little while uh, rather than continuing to sell off. All of that is to say, again, with agriculture, prices trade sideways for a period of time until there's a supply disruption. And as you see with cocoa markets, when there's a supply disruption, prices can move quickly to the upside. And so uh, diversified strategies giving you exposure to the commodity sector, we think makes sense in these markets. Fantastic. Well, we're going to have to leave it there. Jake, thank you so much for coming on the show and sharing your insights with us. Uh, it's a pleasure as always. Thank you.